This episode of Android Q&A is brought to you by Full Sail University. So you guys may remember a few years ago, a video came out about the iPhone 5. Just before its release, it was a concept video suggesting that maybe one day the iPhone 5 might have a holographic capacity and be able to project a holographic keyboard on your table from the phone and be able to functionally use that keyboard to type on your iPhone. Now, of course, this was fake. This was a concept video, but that did not stop some news outlets from publishing it as if it were real, namely a Fox News affiliate from New York State. Now, I'm not suggesting the video we talk about today is fake because it is not, but it does demonstrate the tendency for us human beings to not look very deeply into things. So we're gonna take this Essex Edge Ben Gate video and look a little deeper. So a very brief history of Bengate goes a little something like this. Last year, my fellow Torontonian and YouTuber Lou from Unbox Therapy took his iPhone 6 Plus and found that he could relatively easily bend the phone just under the power button. And he did a video of this and it simply blew up. It blew up so much, like 65 million views or something insane like that, that some people accused him of having not so pure motives. So he did the test again in Dundas Square in downtown Toronto in one cut, one take with a whole bunch of witnesses. And he did the same thing again. Now all of this precipitated a, shall we say, more scientific approach to Bengate, proving that all phones will bend under enough pressure, but some phones will bend more easier than others. Ben tests, whether done manually or with well-collaborated testing rigs, are now the thing to do with any new hot device. And these days, it doesn't get any hotter than the Galaxy S6 Edge. The folks at a phone insurance company called Square Trade took it upon themselves to verify just how well the Galaxy S6 Edge would hold under pressure. And for good measure, Square Trade also tested the original Ben Gate victim and other high-profile Android flagship phones. Now to break it down for you, the Galaxy S6 Edge and the iPhone 6 Plus both suffered permanent damage at 110 pounds of force, while the HTC One did a little bit better, bearing a 120 pound load. However, because of its curved construction, the glass on the Galaxy S6 Edge broke right away, while the glass on the other two devices broke at a much higher load. This shouldn't be a surprise. The dual curve on the sheet of Gorilla Glass 4 covering the S6 Edge induces stress points that simply don't exist on a flat pane of glass. Now, Samsung, not one to take this lying down, had their own response. Samsung is not denying Square Trade's findings, but the company says 110 pounds of force is well above the force that a phone that is sat on in the back pocket would endure, which is around 66 pounds of force. Secondly, Samsung points out that the Galaxy S6 Edge can withstand a higher force if the force is applied on its back rather than on its screen. Without offering an actual figure, Samsung is asking Square Trade to conduct the stress test again, which targets both front and back sides, and open the test results to the public. Now, Samsung makes a very legitimate point here. 110 pounds of load is well above what any smartphone is designed to endure. That's a heavy amount of abuse. Now, if you take five pencils and you put them all together in your hand and you try and snap them, that's gonna take approximately 66 pounds of pressure. So that gives you an idea of how much pressure 110 pounds of load is. That is quite a bit. Now, I wanted to clear up something that was said by MKBHD and Lou regarding the whole Ben Gate thing a few months ago. If you remember the second video of Lou on Unbox Therapy where he bends the iPhone 6 Plus again, he points out that not all phones are like this. He bends the iPhone 6 Plus and then he goes and tries to do the same thing to his Moto X and it's a no-go. The Moto X would not bend at all. MKBHD claimed that this was because the Moto X had a magnesium chassis and it added much more strength. But I found out that it was more to do with geometry than the metal in the chassis. There is a Redditor who gave a very intelligent and lengthy response to the whole magnesium versus aluminum chassis question. And he said that the metal had nothing to do with Bengate and it had to do with the geometry of the iPhone 6 Plus. It's very big, long, and thin, and that's why it bent so much easier. Whereas the Moto X is not just thicker, but it has a concave design, which added strength to the structure of the phone. So the moral of the story here is that a thin device comes at a price, and that you should just take care of your devices and try not to sit on them. 
So I promised you guys I'd talk about my new phone, just came yesterday, the Sony Xperia Z3 Compact. Let's start with the things I don't like. The phone is slick. So slippery in fact that I know it's inevitable this phone is going to get dropped. So I have to have some sort of case or bumper on it, covering up an otherwise gorgeous device. There is no lip on the bezel of this device. So if you don't have a case on the device, there's a good chance that you're gonna scratch it when you put it down on a table or some other surface that may have little bits of sand or dirt or grit it's gonna scratch the glass. And my third and final gripe with the phone is kind of a big one, and it surrounds the micro SD card support. Although I have a 64 gigabyte class 10 card in there, it's really, really fast. I have stored all my data, my, uh, my video, my photos, all my podcasts and music. I can't store apps on the SD card at all. So that means I'm confined to the 16 gigabytes of internal storage that's on the device. That doesn't suck right now, but 18 months from now, that's gonna suck. What's up with that, Sony? Now, what do I love? Well, it's the obvious. The whole story around this phone is that it has flagship power in a one-handed device. It's fantastic. It's also very premium. When you hold it, you know it's elegant and sleek and expensive. I also love the dedicated camera button. I don't know why every device doesn't have that. And finally, I really like the near stock Android experience. I put Google Launcher on there and it's fantastic. It's very similar to my Nexus. So I've said this before, if you watch YouTube videos about mobile operating systems, you really might wanna consider a career in mobile technology. Mobile tech is where it's at, and Full Sail University's online and on-campus mobile development bachelor's degree program can teach you all the skills you need to take advantage of these opportunities. In this degree, you learn the specific technology used in creating and distributing apps so that you can conceive, develop, deploy, and market an application from start to finish. Through Full Sail's Project Lunchbox program, students receive a MacBook Pro, industry software, plus iOS and Android devices. If you're ready to master the technology and software to compete in this rapidly growing industry, visit fullsail.edu forward slash authority. So if you guys have any more questions about the Sony Xperia Z3 Compact, please put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. You don't want to forget about my brothers in Android, Josh Joe and the Tech Ninja, Kevin Lonnie, Chris, Gary Nash, and Taylor all working real hard to be your source for all things Android.